Here's a lovely song from George Harrison. Interesting song. It's in two distinct keys. For the verse, we're in the key of C, and then in the chorus, we're in the key of A. And we transition between the two with a nifty little one-bar figure that we'll come to. Uh, we'll look at that first of all, and then we'll get into the verse. So we have this one bar. And that's two beats of F. I'm playing that as an E type bar chord, barred on the first fret. Then an E flat. Now you could play uh, a C shape barred on the third fret. Some people find that easy. I find that difficult. I've never really practiced that. Or more likely, an a type bar chord, and I'm just mushing my third finger across the second, third, and fourth strings at the eighth fret, and then barring on the sixth fret. That's my E flat, just for one beat though. And then we get a G, a G ideally with D in the bass. So standard G chord with the bottom two strings missing will work. So it's going to be like this. And then we're into the verse. Now we'll see this figure again uh, later on, so we'll keep an eye on it. It's a good idea to get it under your fingers first, though. And then we kick off the verse with a bar of C. Something in the way. And then we'll lift off the first finger to make C major 7. She moves. And as you're doing this, Carefully strum across the strings, let those changing notes ring out. Then we go to C7, so first finger's back on the second string, and we've got the little finger on the third fret of the third string. Attracts me like no other to F. Lover. Then we get a D7. Something in the way she woos me to G. But before we go on, let's look at a couple of details that we can use to join those chords up particularly the F to the D7. F and D7 are theoretically a third apart, so if we put a passing bass note of E in between them, maybe at the end of the bar of F, we'll get something like this. I could just lift off my first finger, leaving the open sixth string there. That's going to give me an E, and that'll take me to the D. Tracks me like no other lover kind of a thing. The issue we've got is that the F and the D are in different octaves, so we've got to make the jump somewhere. Uh, the other thing that you could do, play an F and then put the E up here on the second fret of the fourth string, and maybe play C over E, so like a standard C chord, but with the fifth string missing, just for a single beat, that's going to take us nicely onto the D7 too. Attracts me like no other lover Okay, you could do that. You could also come to that from uh, a four string F, that is to say, pick the note on the third fret of the fourth string while it's still on the F, go to the C over E, and then that whole rundown happens on the fourth string, that might be better. Attracts me like no other lover. Something that's better in the way she. Okay, now we've got a bar of G, but again, there's this climbing figure this time rather than a falling figure, but we have this detail. Something in the way she woos me. What happens is this, we get a beat of G, then we get an A minor seven, and particularly we want to keep an eye on the open fifth string and the note that we've now got on the first fret of the second string, because they move from the G on the sixth string and the open second string, and then G over B. And what I'm doing here is rather than putting a note on the top string third fret, I'm putting a note on the second string third fret. That way we have this pair of notes on the outside of both of these, of all of these chords. Something in the way she moves me. That kind of a thing. Nice. Now we get uh, two bars with A minor with a falling note, and uh, on the original we get this kind of thing. So it's A minor, and then A minor major 7, so the note on the 3rd string, 2nd fret, becomes 3rd string, 1st fret. And then it's A minor 7, so that's now open, and 
finally we get to this thing, D9, which you can play various ways, but first finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string, second finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string, and the third and fourth fingers are up on the fifth fret of the second and third string. So that's... That kind of a thing. So, from the top of the verse, something in the way she moves, me like no other lover. D7, something in the way she moves me. I don't want to leave her now. Finally, we get our opening phrase again. Into the second verse, which is exactly the same. Okay, phew. Opening phrase, first verse, opening phrase, second verse. And what happens this time? We go to an A chord to set us up for the chorus. Right, let's have the whole thing so far. And again, something in the smile she knows that I don't need no other lover. Somewhere in a style that shows me I don't want to leave her now. the whole of the first two verses. Okay, let's get into the chorus. Now the chorus is a four bar phrase that repeats the first time we land on an A chord and the second time we land on a C chord. And there's a little rundown that happens in the bass and the left hand of the piano in each of those chords. We'll get to those in a moment, but let's just sketch out the chord sequence for the chorus first of all. We have two beats on A, then we have a C sharp minor, which is an A minor shape barred on the fourth fret. And if you let your bar run across to the 6th string on the 4th fret, there's a G sharp there. So C minor with G sharp, that's really what the chord is. F sharp minor, which is an E minor shape barred on the 2nd fret, and then F sharp minor with E. So I'm just going to do that thing again where I lift my 1st finger off to expose the open bottom string, because what we want is this. You're asking me, will my love grow? We get this bass line under those chords. You're asking me, will my love grow? I don't, D for two, no, G for two, I don't know. And then we repeat the same thing. You stick around, oh, it may show. I don't know. I we're on a chord of C. No. Okay, now in bar four, there's a run down on the, underneath the A chord, and it's simply a chromatic run that happens in the left hand of the piano and the bass. It's this. So we're playing the open fifth string, A, then there's a G sharp on the fourth fret of the bottom, G on the third fret, F sharp on the second fret, F on the first fret, and then the E open and I'm using a different finger for each one just to keep it tidy but you don't have to you're asking me will my love grow I don't know I don't know 
That's easy enough. Now the second one that ends on a C, there's another run underneath the C chord. It's a bit less obvious on the guitar. The notes are C, B, A, G, and then there's E, D, C. So you might then switch to the fourth string for those. So it's C, then second fret of the fifth for B, A, G, down on the third fret of the bottom string, E, D. And that takes us into the guitar solo. So the whole of the chorus. You're asking me, will my love grow? I don't know. I In fact, the guitar solo has exactly the same form as the verse. Now, this song is very unusual in the fact that the chorus is actually only played once. We get the first verse, the second verse, then we get that chorus, then we have a guitar solo, which is exactly the same as the verse, then we get verse three, so that's kind of the space for four verses altogether, and rather than going back to the chorus, we actually finish the song then with our going to A for a bar and then onto a chord of C to finish. Okay, let's have the whole thing, by which I mean let's have verse 1, verse 2, chorus. I'm not going to play the guitar solo. I'm going to go straight into verse 3 and finish. this time.